Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on developing and using models, and that's modeling systems with evidence. You can see since there's a whiteboard in here that we're going to be doing a little bit of drawing. Um, up to this point in all of our mini lessons on models, we've always started by not only creating a model, but defining what is the phenomena that we're trying to model. What will make this video different is we're going to have evidence that goes along with that phenomena. So we're using the phenomena and the evidence to develop a model. And so we want to make sure we define the phenomena, but we also want to make sure that we thoroughly look through the evidence before we start to make our model. As always, a model is going to have two parts to it. It's going to have the important components, and then it's going to show how those components are related together. It'll also have a description, as always. But one thing that we're going to add is the limitations. Uh, models are super powerful, but they all have fundamental differences between the phenomena. So after watching this video, you should be able to look at evidence and develop models on on results from the speed cubing world championships, how fast you can solve a Rubik's cube, or climate change and what's causing that. I'm going to start by looking at some evidence on the building of these four Lego birds, and then you'll have a chance to do the same with plant growth. So let me clean this up and we'll get started. Okay, so I kept track when I was building these uh, Lego birds. We've got a green one, a white one, a brown one, and a small green one. And I gathered a little bit of evidence. So what I'm going to do is define the phenomena first. So the phenomena is the building of these four Lego birds. And then I gathered some data. So let me bring that data table out. The first thing I kept track of in the data table is the color of the bird. Lots of times data will be organized that way. So this is the green bird, the white bird, the brown bird, and then the small little green bird. Next thing I kept track of was the number of Lego pieces. So the one that has the most pieces would be this green bird, and the one that has the least would be that little egg. I also kept track of the time it takes to build. And so the one that took the longest is going to be the green bird, and the one that took the shortest would be that white bird. And then the last thing I kept track of is the number of different colors in the Lego model itself. And so this would be the evidence. So now we've got the phenomena, and now we've got the evidence. And so what you want to do is start looking for patterns in the evidence. So if I look at the colors, there's couple that are green. Some of these have a lot of pieces. Some of them have fewer pieces. Uh, the ones that have longer, more pieces took more time to build and also have a greater variety of different colors. So you want to look at the patterns of them and you also want to start thinking about what's the relationship. So how is the number of Lego pieces related to the number of different colors? And you can see that it looks like there's a relationship there as well. So once I've looked at the evidence, the next thing I want to do is I want to identify the different components. And let me show you a real easy way to do that. So you can see in my model, all I'm doing is I'm just copying down what are the headings in the data table. So color of bird, number of Lego pieces, time to build, and then the number of different colors. And so now that I have all the components, I want to more, think more deeply about the relationship. So how are these all related to each other? So let me get those out on that whiteboard. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to start thinking about each of these relationships. So what's the relationship between the number of Lego pieces and the time to build? So there's a clearly a relationship between the two. And so I think there's a relationship between the two. And then you can start thinking about, does this cause a change in this? Does this cause a change in that? And I think the more Lego pieces you have, that's going to cause an increase in the time it takes to build. And so I could write cause here. So that just means that as I increase the Lego pieces, that increases the time to build. Now, if we think about the number of Lego pieces and the color of bird, you could have lots of different Legos that have different numbers of Lego pieces and different colors. And so I don't think there's really a relationship between the two. Um, it doesn't matter what the color is. So we still see the relationships over here. Now let's look at the different number of colors. So it looks like there is some kind of a relationship. So the more Lego pieces there are, the more different colors there are. So this is high. And so on this one, I would say there is, it seems like there is a relationship here. 
but I don't think you could change this and it would change this, or you could change this and it would change that. And I think the same thing is going to take place here. So there's a relationship between the two, but I don't think one is causing the other. So what I would write here is that there is a correlation between the two. And remember, correlation does not imply causation. So now what I have, I've got a model, it's got the important components, and then I've shown how they're related. What am I missing? I'm missing just a description and limitation. So let me write down a description. Okay, so as I write the description, what is the description? It's maybe hard to read. As you increase the number of pieces in a Lego model, so that's going to be right here, it causes an increase in the time to build or the build time. It also may be correlated with an increase in the different numbers of colors. And so that's a description of my model. Those are the big three parts of a model. What am I missing now? I have to think about this is the phenomena over here and this is the evidence and this is my model. So what are some limitations of the model that don't fully explain uh, the evidence and the phenomena itself? So let me write down an example of a limitation. Okay, so a limitation that I wrote is that this model, so my model right here and here, doesn't account for differences in the complexity of different models. So I think these are pretty simple Lego models, and I know some are much bigger and much more complex, and some of the pieces are more complex. And so my model doesn't represent that, and so eventually I could start to add complexity as another element of the model. And so this is how you use evidence to model systems, and so what I'm going to do is clean this up, and I'm going to give you a chance to do one of your own. Okay, for the second one, we're going to be looking at data from an experiment. In this experiment, the plants were given different amounts of light, and then this is a photograph of what the plants look like, and then this is going to be a data set. So this is a data set of that plants. You can see the light intensity here is in the first column, plant height, contain, uh, container color, and then the leaf number. So what I encourage you to do is pause the video, take a second to look at the evidence. You could look at the photograph. Define a phenomena, then identify the important components, relationships, description, limitation, then unpause the video, come back, and I'll show you my thinking. Okay, so I'm going to put the evidence over here to the side. The first thing I want to think about is what is the phenomena? So the first uh, phenomena that I wrote down is that they change the light intensity and then what they're looking at is the amount of plant growth. So that's the phenomena. As I look through, I can see the light intensity is decreasing from 40,000 lux down to 10,000. That's the first pattern. And so as that goes down, I can see that the plant height is also going down. I also can see that they're in different colors, and then I do see some kind of a relationship here with leaf number. It looks like the ones that have more light have more leaves. And so the next thing that I want to write is I want to write down what are the important components and how they're related. So let me show you how I would do that. Okay, now when you're starting to write down relationships, you really want to think about these headings. So I just copied the headings down for the components. And so as I think about light intensity, it sure looks like as you increase the light intensity from 10,000 to 40,000, you increase the plant height. And I don't think changing the plant height would increase the light. So I'm going to draw an arrow in this direction. So I think increasing the light intensity causes an increase in plant height. Um, what else would I say? I think there's not really any relationship to the container color. So I don't think there's a relationship there, but I do think there are some correlations here. So it does seem like there's a correlation between increases in light intensity and then the number of leaves. Um, but we don't know if this is actually causing that, and, and I think there is probably a correlation here as well. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to write down the description.
So for the description, what I wrote is that an increase in light intensity causes an increase in plant height and may be correlated with a, a increased leaf number or increased leaf numbers. Next thing I want to do is then write down a limitation. So for a limitation, what I wrote down for my model is it does show there's a cause between light, increased light intensity and plant height, but it doesn't show any kind of a mechanism of how that might occur. And so this is how you look at evidence. What I would encourage you to always do is just look for the patterns first, then the relationships between those, and then use those as your components to identify relationships. So I would encourage you to go practice this. So below there are some slides. You could look at data from the speed cumin, cubing results or even climate change. And so uh, that's how you use evidence to develop uh, models, especially of complex systems, and I hope that's helpful.